A WWE star was written off TV on NXT last night and might not be coming back. The latest on Cody Rhodes' future as WWE Champion, how long Rhea Ripley will be out and more. I'm Luke Owen and this is the WrestleTalk News. Support WrestleTalk! But first, some important breaking news. Will Ospreay has made quite a few waves since signing with AEW late last year and debuting for the company as a full-time member of the roster at Revolution, from incredible matches with Kaneske Takeshita and Carl Fletcher, to his rather clear jab at Triple H on last week's Dynamite, which itself was a response to Triple H taking his own shot at Osprey over WrestleMania weekend for being afraid of the WWE grind. But he has now finally answered the question that has puzzled Americans all over. America? Just what exactly is a Cheeky Nando's? Osprey explained on Hey EW that Cheeky Nando's is when you're feeling real hungry. You're hungry for something, but you don't want fast food because fast food ain't good for you. But you don't want to go fine dining. Fine dining's too much. Bam! Cheeky Nando's comes in. Well, I hope that's cleared up everything for you. If you do have any further questions, please let me know what they are in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Sadly, we now have to move on to slightly more serious matters. Last night's NXT saw a segment involving Tony D'Angelo's family and no quarter catch crew. Only the latter team was missing a member in Drew Gulak. During the promo, it was revealed that no quarter catch crew struck a deal with the family to take care of someone for them and that it was done for the good of the industry. While his name was never mentioned, the implication is that Drew Gulak has been removed from the faction and NXT entirely. Corey Brennan of Fightful Select reported that there were no names listed for the segment on the show's rundown and that Gulak is no longer listed internally as part of the No Quarter Catch crew. Brennan later added on Twitter the implication is it happened off screen and they're not directly referencing him as the directive has been to avoid mentioning his name in recent weeks. This all comes off the back of an interview that Ronda Rousey did with News Nation, where she accused Gulak of sexual misconduct, claiming, I was standing there and this guy who I was barely an acquaintance with grabs the string of my sweatpants as I'm walking by. She later confirmed in the interview that she was talking about Drew Gulak. Gulak responded to the comments on Twitter saying, backstage at a WWE event in 2022, I saw Ronda talking with a group in the hallway. I stopped to say hi and shake all their hands. And in an attempt to shake her hand, I accidentally touched her drawstring. Complete accident and one that I had apologized to her for the mishap. Following the news, Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Radio said that there were those in WWE who expected Gulak to be gone from the company, but nothing official was announced. Corey Brennan has now added via Twitter, I have been told Drew Gulak won't be back for a while, if at all. And on Fightful's NXT review added that this was done so the group could move past this with the idea they could potentially add a new member to replace Gulak. If you have been affected by anything discussed today, please visit WrestleTalk's Support Each Other page, which is linked to in the video description down below. But there are other changes afoot in NXT as it pertains to the WWE Draft. This year's WWE Draft will take place on April 26th and 29th, and there is reportedly going to be more crossover with NXT this year to firm establish them as the third brand ahead of their debut on the CW. Last night on NXT, Carmelo Hayes lost again to Trick Williams, this time in a steel cage match, which, let's be honest, was the second best steel cage match held on a Tuesday night. Shout out to Hustle's Adriano and Rocco cage match on last night's show. And following his loss, Hayes was given the big NXT send-off by the audience. Only he flipped them off. What a heel. Hayes has long been rumored for a main roster call-up, even featuring on SmackDown late last year prior to his heel turn. And Corey Brennan of Fightful is reporting that Hayes is one of only two names that are for sure getting called up in this year's draft, with the other being NXT champion Ilya Dragunov. He added on Fightful's review of NXT that the family are also potentially getting called up in the draft, but if they do, it will only be Tony D'Angelo and Stax going to the main roster. Brennan also reports that Baron Corbin has long been considered for a main roster return and that he will likely join SmackDown as there have been lots of pitches for his team with Bron Breaker to get a main roster run. He also adds that both Triple H and Shawn Michaels are very high on Dijak, whose contract is coming up soon 
soon and there's a big push to re-sign him and if he does, he will likely stay in NXT. And finally, though Roxanne Perez was featured on Raw last week and announced as eligible for the draft, Brennan has not heard that she's getting called up. But in order to make NXT feel like a legitimate third brand, there has to be people from Raw and SmackDown going to NXT. And Brennan reports that Ivar, Natalia, and The Final Testament are potentials to get drafted to NXT on a full-time basis. However, none of this is confirmed or official. Brennan has said that he's asked around about potential call-ups or call-downs, and he's not the only one. He says that talent have asked Shawn Michaels about the draft, and he can only respond with a shrug and has told them that nothing has been finalized yet in terms of who is going where. One person who may have found their new home, however, is Cody Rhodes. Cody cut a promo on this week's Raw where he addressed storylines involving The Rock and Roman Reigns, but also thanked Seth Rollins before bringing out Jey Uso for his match with Finn Balor. In the promo, Cody said he was now technically a SmackDown guy, but that doesn't mean his time with Raw is over. However, Dave Meltzer has said that Cody's promo was designed to be a good buy of sorts to the red brand as he goes to SmackDown full time, where he will start his first title feud with either AJ Styles or LA Knight. Yeah. His endorsement of Jey Uso was reportedly done to establish him as the top baby face of the brand, with CM Punk out injured, Seth Rollins taking time off, and Cody heading to SmackDown. WWE.com have now also confirmed the decision, listing Rhodes on their website as a SmackDown star. And that is not the only change. Interestingly, WWE.com also confirms that Cody did indeed keep his promise heading into WrestleMania that he will rename the Universal Championship as the website lists him as undisputed WWE Champion, dropping the Universal bit entirely. Cody had said leading into WrestleMania that he wanted to rename the title back to simply the WWE Championship, the title his dad never held, and even said that he wanted to bring back the old winged eagle design, which I think is a better design, similar to how he brought back the white strap Intercontinental Championship in the 2010s. However, there's nothing been reported on that change ever being made. WWE.com also has the awesome truth as the World Tag Team Champions, but still lists A-Town Down Under as the SmackDown Tag Champions, though that will likely change this Friday, when presumably they'll also get new belt designs. The other change made is that Vacant has claimed another title, following the sad news that Rhea Ripley was injured during a segment on Raw last week with Liv Morgan and had to relinquish her title on this week's show. It's been reported that Ripley has hurt her AC joint and could be out of action for upwards of three months, according to Wrestling Observer Radio. Fightful Select, on the other hand, writes there is no firm timetable on Rhea Ripley's return as of now. Fightful Select also also confirmed the injury occurred when Ripley went into the wall during last week's Raw, and has been described on Twitter by Sean Ross Sapp as a freak accident. He also adds that there is no heat on Liv Morgan for the injury, and reported via Fightful Select that Morgan was not blamed by Ripley or WWE. SRS reports that internal discussions were had about the injury as far back as last Wednesday, and that the company had decided by last week that the women's world title would be vacated. Speaking of injuries, and Sean Rossap is also reporting via Twitter that several promoters have noted that Matt Cardona has informed them he suffered a torn pec and will require surgery. We here at WrestleTalk wish both Cardona and Ripley a speedy recovery. Lastly for today's show, and a top three agent tag team is now all but confirmed to be heading to All Elite Wrestling. After landing Adam Copeland, Mercedes Monet, Kazuchika Okada, and Will Ospreay over the last six months, it was reported last week that former TNA Tag Team X Division and World Champions Alex Shelley and Chris Saban, better known as the Motor City Machine Guns, will likely be signing with AEW. And now Body Slam are reporting that the deal is basically done. Shelley and Saban finished up with TNA at the end of March, and Body Slam reports that there were hopes within that company that they would re-sign. However, the general belief was they were headed to AEW. Cassidy Haynes has now reported this is the case, and reports via Body Slam that they are working on finalizing a deal, but added the deal is not going to be finalized for a bit. He does add, however, a deal will be worked out. Hey, look, I'm a former TNA Tag Team Champion. Does that mean I get to sign with AEW as well? Did you enjoy WrestleMania 40? Well, we tried to predict WrestleMania 41 Jorge too far in advance. Find out how I booked Simon Miller on the show by clicking the video on screen.